Good morning, good evening, hello and hi and welcome to this week's Fiberific Live Craft and Chat. I know we had a week off. I was feeling less than stellar. Is let's go with that. Less than stellar. Um feeling a lot better. Feeling a lot better. I keep going up and down. I think last week I was just like Okay, I can do this. I can't do this. I can do this. And that's how my whole week went. Uh, so a welcome to everybody. A um, couple of housekeeping things just to get them into the mindsets is that um, here in this live crafting chat, we are multi craftual. So there's no crochet only, only, you know, whatever only. We, we're all about all, all crafts. And, and we are all about positivity in whatever that we're passionate about. So uh, unless you're a troll, then I'm sorry that even though you're passionate about being a troll, that's about the, that's the line. That's the line. So a welcome, a welcome. Good morning to everybody who is in the chat. Um, I'm just having a quick look here. If you are new here and you are wondering why we have people with green names and people with blue names and and different colored things we have channel memberships available on this channel and that means that uh if you enjoy what we do here in these in these mostly weekly live streams except for when i'm sick um then you can actually support me making it possible for me to keep doing these live streams so you can jump in you can choose whatever tier you like wherever you feel like you know you want to be and you can jump in and the advantages of that is you do get the highlighted name i do see your post first if you reply on a on a on a pre-recorded video or a, or you know later on a live on a replay um you, your post is quite highlighted it's very big lots of attention to it um and you know also so if you are a channel member for a month or more, I think it is, if you go and click that little dollar sign that appears under the chat, that um, that will give you a free super chat. So, uh, and then we'll be able to bring that up on screen, at least at the moment in this software, I can do this uh, and we can, you know, do a dance and do a cheer together and be you can be supportive that way as well. Uh, winter should be done here from Freaky. It's just, it's just kicking in here in Australia. Freaky. It's, it's not awesome. Um, we've got Kelly Pohl who is, uh, in the chat. She is working, which is our term for lurking while you're at work. Uh, because in this live stream, it's 10 AM on a Thursday morning. So lots of Australians are actually at work. Um, whereas a lot of our U S friends are making dinner or, you know, things like that. Uh, Kathy has hit us up with a a green s members chat. 18 months of membership. Good to see you are well. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Um, it was just like an evil, evil head cold that just really hit me hard. It Abby was done and dusted in three days. I took nearly two weeks. So, you know, thank you, Asthma. Woohoo. Love you. Uh, good morning, Shannon Cooper. Welcome to the chat. Oh, good evening. Sorry. Welcome to the chat. Um, Holly Alderson just wanted to pop in for a few minutes and say hi. It's great to see you, Holly. It's good to see you in the chat. Okay. So before we jump in, I do have the Mosaic project here, but there is something I wanted to talk about first. I received a parcel in the post of some amazing yarn. Okay. So I, I know I've, I've hinted at it, hinted, um, and I was going to do a separate video, but what I've decided to do is do a little, a little piece here and then I'll cut, cut it out and make it a separate video. So you guys who are here in the lives, you get to see it and hear it first, but it does mean that just for a moment, I'm really going to try and hard not to focus on the chat until I, until I, you know, ask for questions. And if you've got questions, please put them in. Um, okay. Now, before I get started, Leanne has popped in with her members chat as well. 18 months member, almost number one member, almost so close, but not quite. Um, Megan says, I'm still trying to shake this cold. It is hanging on. Yeah, they are a bit mean. They are a bit mean, some of these colds. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you about this parcel that I received. Now, this was an amazing surprise that I got. Catherine from the Australian Wool Store, who I've been friends with for a long time, 
put this post out on Instagram about how one of her yarn ranges was now having 51 colors across all of the weights. And I'm just like, wait, what? How did I not know this? How did I not know this about the Australian wool store? Because I've shopped in her shop. But then I realized that I'd only really shopped in her hand dyed section. I hadn't shopped in her commercial dyed section. So I went and had a look and I was absolutely blown away. Okay. Now I was gobsmacked. So I contacted Catherine and I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe you've got 51 colors. And she was like, actually this other range I have has 70 odd colors. And I was just like, wait, what now? So Catherine made me a care package and I'm going to show you what came in my care package and my thoughts on the care package. Now, Catherine's not a sponsor. She has no input in what I'm saying here. So I get to say what I want to say and I get to be blunt and honest because that's what I am. And, um, and you guys get the benefit of my honesty and my opinion. And now this is the other thing. This is my opinion. And you may or may not agree because opinions are like armpits. Everybody has one. Okay, well, or two you know, if you have two arms. Okay. So I've just got a thing here. I'm just going to drop it in the chat. There you go. So we have a link there. I'm sorry, mods. I didn't get it to you earlier, but you can cut and paste that link. It's also in the description below. And this is a link directly to the commercial dyed section of the Australian wool store. So let's stop talking. Let's go straight in. So this is one of the ranges. So we've got this range first and I made some samples. So we have this, this is a four ply. So it goes four ply, eight ply, 12 ply and 14 ply. And all of the colors are available in all of the sizes. Okay. And I am just, you know, blown away at the range of colors. And I also love that not only do we have Maker Yarn, who are doing some beautiful things with acrylics, but we have the Australian Wool Store that are doing phenomenal things with wool and with cotton. And she also does some hand dyeing as well. Okay, so I wanted to start. This is a four ply. Now, this is quite tightly spun. So I think this could work as socks, okay? Like as is, there's no nylon. Now this is 200 meters for 50 grams. All of these balls are 50 gram balls, okay? Um, now off the top of my head, that was $7 a ball for 50 grams. So if you are a person who likes color work or wants multiple colors and doesn't need a big ball of yarn for it, not only is this amazing and economical because this is 100% Australian wool, this is also means that you can get lots of different colors, okay? So this was the four ply. I personally found the four ply to just to be have a little bit of bite to it. It's got a little, it's, it's a little grippy. Um, I probably couldn't wear it next to my skin except for, you know, for socks. It's a little, it's, it's, it has beautiful stitch definition. Um, if it will focus, come on, there we go. You got, you got this. Don't focus on my hand. Focus on the crochet. No, it doesn't want to. Anyway, gorgeous stitch definition, which you can't see. Um, holds beautiful. None of these squares have been blocked. Holds beautifully. Um, but for me, I would say it feels a little like classic. If you've worked with Bendigo Woolen Mills, um, and you felt the classic, it feels a little like classic. Now it's not, it's not the same way it's plied. This is just a standard ply. This is not a crepe. Um, but it's got that same sort of like, like you can see the little, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a little halo off it because it's pure wool. Oh, there you go. You probably can see it if I move my hands out of the way. Okay. So the four ply, I was a bit, because it was the first one I worked with as well. So I was a bit like, oh, okay, this is a little bit classic-y. I personally am not the biggest fan of classic when it comes to Bendigo Woolen Mills. I tend to jump over the luxury. Um, but for socks, this would hold together really well. Now, the other thing is it's a machine washable, gentle on a gentle cycle, cold water, dry, flat and shade, cool iron with a damp cloth and that's across all of them okay so it is super wash so you can pop it in the washing machine you still got to be careful with it but it is definitely um an option there so that was the four ply so then i moved over to the eight ply and i was just like wait what 
And because this is a little more, like it's got more plies and it's a little more softly spun, it didn't have the same handle as the four ply. So I think I could actually wear the eight ply next to my skin as well as the 10 and the 12. The four ply was just a little too um, classic-y feeling. This was less. This was more like... Um, I want to say a little bit more like Peyton's dream time, if you've ever held that before. Uh, and again, machine washable, gentle cycle, cool iron, damp cloth. So you can totally block it, steam block it, whatever you want to do with it, you can do it. And again, this is available in the four ply and, uh, uh, sorry, not the four ply, this is available in all of the colors. So this was the, the crochet square I made. Now I did all my samples with the recommended hook on the packaging. So this one here was done with a, a four mil. Um, even though I do normally go down hook sizes because I'm a bit loose, I found that the four mil for this eight ply was perfect. I didn't need to go down. It wasn't thin at all. And then again, the four mil knitting needles. Um, I probably would go down to a 375, depending on what I was making, but it still made a beautiful fabric. So I was really super happy with that. So that was that one. Then we jump over to the 10 ply, which we're starting in, we're getting into squish land. Okay. So when you go from four ply to 10 ply, total difference in feeling, total squishiness. Um, oh, I meant to say the eight ply has a hundred meters per 50 grams. So the 10 ply has 85 meters per 50 grams, still available in all of the colors. And we are starting to get into some like chonky work. So this needed a five mil hook. Actually, did I? Yeah, yeah, five mil hook to get this square. Um, and then again, five mil needles for this guy here. So super happy. Now the 14 ply, I didn't think I was gonna like cause I don't work in chunky yarns very often at all. But holy dooly, I think I'm obsessed and I need to make myself a jumper. Now, obviously, I, th to make up these samples, it used up a bit more of the yarn. This is 50 meters for 50 grams. Um, total squish. I only made the crochet um, square just two rounds just because, oh, did I make it? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, wait a second. Did I miss a bit? Um, but I've just made it two rounds just because it was using up like tons of yarn the two round of the 14 ply used it came out bigger than a one two uh, one two three four round of a four ply so i was just like oh i want to save some i do want to keep the ball and the wrapper a little bit intact so there's this guy here it's so much squish and it knitted up holy cow i can just imagine like an amazing sweater um total squishy blanket that just knits up really fast this uses a seven millimeter um needles or a do we have oh yeah or a 10 and a 10.5 k us um but yeah so total squish fill all right guys so these were amazing and i was just like okay these were the ones i was not expecting this is the one that's available in 70 odd colors now i'm going to jump over here to a a screen share that I have there we go so we're going to jump over to her website so over here so this is we'll go with the 14s just because it's a little bigger um, so it comes in all of these colors okay so it's in 70 odd colors that it's available in so all the information that you need is right here if you click on the picture that you get the color and, this, and then she also has these amazing packs. I've just got this tickle in my throat. I'm just going to deal with that. So if you can't choose what color you want, she has these rainbow packs of like spring pastels or summer brights. Although I think summer brights and winter warmth might be out of stock. They've got a little line through them. Um, but you can still click on them and look at them. And I'm sure if you sent her a message... It said, hey, Chicky, I'm interested. So um, there, so you can buy a pack. So it is totally, totally just gorgeous. And all of these colors, there's, I think, I think there was 70 odd colors back to commercially dyed. Let me see. 71 colors available in these guys. Okay. And obviously there's a gray. 
Like, uh, there's actually quite a few greys, and I am pretty impressed. I'm like, I want, I was going to be like, I'm going to buy enough for a grey sweater. And then I'm like, but no, I want other colours. I want other colours. Now, this is not all she sent me, okay? So this was from the Australian wool store, and this was not all that she sent. She did not just send me these four yarns. She also sent me some of her super fine merino. Um, which is available in the 56 colors. Okay. So this is all of these beautiful colors. See how, like, I, I kind of, I have one gripe. If you're going to start with the color balls, you've got to continue with the color balls, but you know, maybe there's a problem. I don't know. So, um, all of these colors, 56 colors available in these others. Now these are $11 for the 50 grams, whereas these are $7 for the 50 grams. I don't even know how to describe what this feels like. I don't. I am legitimately blown away. So again, we have the four ply, the eight ply, the 10 ply, and the 12 ply. Oh no, this one's a 14 ply. Sorry, not a 12 ply. It's a 14 ply. That one's also a 14 ply, not a 12 ply, just in case I said that. Okay. So... These are just, again, like she was like, oh, choose some colors. How? How do I choose colors from that range, that insane range? 56 colors available in these ones. How do I choose? Anyway, I tried to just, you know, choose. Um, I, I tried to go like, you know, like something a little, the boys would wear, the girls would wear for babies. For I didn't even know what I was thinking. Honestly, I was just trying to get some stuff from the different colors, you know, I failed miserably. But anyway, so this four ply, I look, I would say now it's a different, it's a different construction than luxury. It's a much round yarn. I can imagine cables would just look stunning, absolutely stunning in this yarn. Um, it's so soft. It's, it's, I have any of you ever used Zara because the Zara, this made me instantly think of Zara the second I touched it and I'm like, okay, so I wanted to make a beautiful sweater out of this one and see how this is more of a, you can see the plies better. This is more, um, these plies are different. They're a bit fluffier, a bit softer. It's hard to describe the difference in the construction but they are constructed differently. So depending on what you want, you might need to grab a ball of each to test out what you want. But this super fine merino, again, it's Australian super fine merino, is unbelievably soft to squish in this. Actually, if you've got Maker Yarn, the actual construction is really similar to the Maker Dirty DK. Okay, so if you've got any of the Maker Yarn, it's actually very similar construction to that. Whereas this is a much more similar to luxury construction for comparison for Australians. Sorry, sorry those of you in the US. I don't have any US yarns that I can automatically compare to. Now, I didn't make any samples of this because I kept just doing this. I just kept patting them in the ball and I haven't made samples yet. Now, I did get sent an extra of the 10 ply. So I do have a beautiful purple and a Prussian blue. Um... In the in the template so these are 87 meters per 50 grams okay uh the the this is espresso and the other thing i love is the actual color names is printed on these tickets as on the stickers as well stickers yarn ball tags yeah and it's on both types so you can actually just see the there's the the color number the color name and the dialot number they're all right there so it's very very easy for you to see all the instructions are very easy to gather they're all written right there this one here is again gentle machine wash in cold water dry flat in the shade so again it's super wash um and i just love it so if you want to give any of these a try if you've got a project that you need lots of colors for i'm going to go back over to the screen share so um we're in the merino four ply here um and I just like, so we got the, this was the, I'm just going to bring up the colors so that you can see them a bit better. What color were you? Lemon butter. 
Oh, that sounds dreadful, doesn't it? Lemon butter. Where are you? Is that you? No. Who can see lemon butter? There it is. Last one. Boom. There you go. The lemon butter is this one here that I've got in my hand right now. Um, I've got all the camera settings set to not go crazy on the pink for the for the uh, fusion blanket. So these are just they're just beautiful. So if you want to go and get your hands on any of these colors, they're just it was so hard for me to choose. And use the link that I've popped in the description. Go and check it out and try and choose colors for yourself. Um, and so the Australian Wool Store uh, has a huge amount in stock and she's really good with communication. So if you've got a question for her. Now, the other thing that I did notice when I was bringing this on to, um, to show I just want to go back to the yarn where well, she does have some special deals. So you get a maker's dozen discount. So if you put 13 balls of yarn in your cart, the 13th is automatically free. Uh, but if you need to like make a huge project like blankets or bulk buy or group buy, there's actually 50% off gets a uh, 50 balls plus gets 10% off and 150 plus balls gets 20% off. And she has flat rate postage. Uh, and um, I'm assuming that's flat rate in Australia. So I don't know if she does international po shipping. You'll need to double check her shipping policies for that. Uh, but you could totally go and check that out. Now, um, I'm going to jump into the chat. If you have questions about this yarn, please pop them into the chat. Um, I'm going to go, or if you want me to go and look at something on here on the website, let me know. So I'm going to go into the chat now. Um, Knit Spin Girls says, where is this yarn from? This yarn from, is from the Australian Wool Store. Um, link is in the description. And also, I'm sure one of the mods could throw that back in the chat for me. Josephine's got it just above your question there. So if you want it, that's the Australian Wool Store. So um, she's down in New South Wales. I can't exactly remember where in New South Wales. So, um, yeah. Uh, were there any other questions about this yarn? I'm just having a scroll back here. Um... Da, 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 da. Oh, Megan says she's never worked with a 12 ply before. I've never worked with a massive ply either because I'm in Queensland. It's not usually something I'm that interested in. Um, and um, <laughs> and why would you need a 14 ply jumper? I don't. Okay. That's the reality. I don't. But this would be super squishy. All right. It'd be like one of those. I would make one of those big grandpa sweaters. You know, the ones where you just. It's like you're wearing a hug and I would only get to wear it for half a dozen days a year up here, but I would absolutely get in there and wear it if I had that. Um, Shannon says the colors are beautiful. They are. They are. Okay. So if, if there's no other questions about these amazing, beautiful things, um, we're going to move on. But if you've got any questions, just jump in and let me know. Oh, I have one more thing to say. I have one more thing to say. Because this wasn't it. This wasn't the pack. This wasn't all of the pack that she sent through. Okay. There was one other thing. So like, you know, it's not like this wasn't enough that she sent me this as an amazing gift. But Catherine's a friend. Catherine knows my obsession with grey. Okay. She knows. She knows me. She knows I'm obsessed. I'm just going to stack this up. I can't see half the screen because of that. But what she also sent me was in 10 ply wool, a gray gradient. So I have crow, charcoal, drizzle, cloud, and whisper. So she also sent me this amazing gray gradient. Now these two colors are the same weight of yarn. Okay. So they're all 10 plies. So now I need a project. I need a project. So what have I got here? Uh, meterage wise, 87 meters per 50 grams times one, two, three, four, five. If I just want to go all grays or if I want like some little hints of a color, I can toss in the Prussian blue and the aubergine. So you guys need to come at me with some pattern choices. Um, so, yeah. And it's just like Catherine's such a good friend. And she knows. She's heard me. She's heard me complain that there's never enough greys. 
And now look, there's so many greys. I'm so excited. There's so many greys. So, I don't, you know what? I don't even think that's all the grey. I just think that, like, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty excited. Um, for my money, it would depend on the project that I'm working on, which, which of the yarns. I wouldn't rule at, like, while this is like butter, this is ridiculously soft. I would definitely would not rule this out for something that you want to be a little bit more hard wearing, um, something that you just want. It needs longevity. I've, I don't, and this is the thing, I haven't used any of these yarns long enough to know how they're going to launder, how they're going to pill, if they're going to pill. I don't know. I'm just going to quickly just check the instructions. I don't know if they're, they're anti-pilling. Um, it's not specified. So I don't know about anything um, in that regard. And so we'll have to, you know, keep our eyes peeled for this. But it is 100% wool. Both of them are. This one's super fine merino. This one's pure wool. I don't even know what to say beyond that, honestly. So it is such a, I agree with you, Angela. Oh, I, I got it. I got it, Angela. I also am a Firefly nerd. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. That's that. I just, I desperately needed, I've been trying to not talk about these yarns for like two weeks. I got them before I got sick and, and then just trying to not talk about them was so hard. I, it was so difficult just to not talk about them. So, um, now I don't have to not talk about, not, not, not talk about them. So I'm just moving these out just so that they're kitty safe. Um, my kitten has decided that she quite likes just running and jumping and just latching onto me and crawling up. Um, my skin's not a fan of that. I'm just sorry about the noise here with me putting this away. Um, my skin is, it's not its favorite. Get the bag. Um, but yeah, it is such pretty yarn. Such pretty, pretty yarn. Speaking of pretty yarn, we have the Maker Project. Dice rolls. I should probably get the dice, right? Bloop. I have the dice. Okay. Oh, I actually feel so much better having talked about it because I was trying so hard not to give anything away. And I really, I really suck at that when it comes to yarn, honestly. Some things, no problems, no issues. But I've got squishy pretty yarn, seriously. And do you guys know the video, the little short video that has just recently been up on the channel where the cat is inside the satchel? That was the satchel. It was the satchel that that was in. So, all right, now we're back to standard live chat rules, everybody. So jump on in. Um, I, I'm just looking here and it looks like I'm really delayed in YouTube. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on. Oh, okay. Cause I was off the screen. It actually, I was like halfway through the talk in my cup today. I just have honey and water just to try and protect my throat a little bit. It's not. Um, it's not a hundred percent you guys. And my voice just disappears after a, a little bit of talking. So, um, definitely honey and water for me today. And I've even brought extra supplies to heat it up, to keep it warm. Mm. And after talking about squishy yarn for half an hour, it needs a little top up with the hot. Pretty yarn from the Game of Widows. Thank you, the Game of Widows. It was, I'm very happy with it. Leanne says, so pretty, all the greys. I'd make a wide scarf or wrap. I don't, because it's the 10 ply, I'm thinking the meterage is going to be an issue um, because it's only, I think off the top of my head, 87 meters per 50 grams. So I don't know if I get a scarf, but I'd probably get like a cowl or a cowl and beanie, but maybe because scarves are actually quite yarn hungry. Um, and I, and I don't know, I, I might even knit it, honestly, I might even knit it. All right. So let's, let's just jump in. It's math rocks time. And, and something that we need to bring up now, now that we can, um, Louis in the house. Hello, Lou boy. 
Uh, he has worked out how to wrap himself up in blankets, which is kind of cute and funny um, because he was always that dog that didn't want to be under a blanket. And now it's like, oh, is there a blanket? I shall. And he grabs it with his little mouth and rolls into it. It's kind of really funny. If we get to see that, I will totally be clipping it. Um, but yeah, so it is definitely a definite one. Shannon Cooper says, yarn always makes me feel better. Me too. Me too. Absolutely. Angel is drinking some Diet Right Soda. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Um, I could make my dad a cow with that template. I mean, I could. I could. But I'm not going to. That's my yarn. That was a gift for me from a friend. So I need to make something for me out of it, right? Like, is that? am I being selfish? Possibly. Possibly. I don't know. Okay. Um, or you could break out your loom and weave something. I'm thinking a gradient warp. Oh, that sounds amazing. It's been a long time since I've broken out the loom. I like the idea of that. Mm. Yeah, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. Or oh, see, you guys always inspire me so much. So, so much. Okay. It is dice roll time, everybody. Um, let's get the dice rolling so that we can start crocheting and continue our conversation. Are we ready? It's dice roll, dice roll. Dice roll. time. Roll the dice to choose the next color. Alrighty, let's go. First dice off the block. Let's see what color we have. I've got the wild card stuff set up just in case. It's got to happen eventually, right? Nispin Girl wants eight. Leanne wants, uh, sorry, wants three. Leanne wants eight. Oh, it's a two. It's two. So for those of you that love Morpho, it is two. All right. So we've got Morpho in the house. It looks more like the picture, that picture over there, than it does here. Because this pink... I didn't think of this when we decided on the color schemes, but this pink is destroying my cameras. It doesn't like it. This is such a gorgeous, vibrant, hot pink. It's not red at all. So if you are looking at it going, huh, what? Um, then you need to, I've just got to write down the number. Then you need to go and check out my Instagram posts. I'm getting better photos of the blanket. Um, not always awesome or perfect, but the photos come out better than the videos, um, but the colors are just so amazing. And like, look, you know what? I am loving how the back is looking as well. So in Instagram today, later on after the stream, I'll make sure I get a good photo of the back and a good photo of the front at the same time for the same post. So you can go and check it over there. If you're not following me on Instagram, I'd like to know why not. And uh, you need to remedy that by going and following me on Instagram. So, um, I'm, I'm not super active. Like I'm not going to spam your feed or anything. I'm not bad on Instagram. Um, I don't send random DMs to people. Well, I mean, I do, but just to friends and suppose it's just because I'm random. I'm a random kind of person. Um, okay. So back to the chat. Um, you're definitely not being selfish. Ah, oh, thank you. I appreciate you saying that Angela, because sometimes I think that when I'm making something for myself, and pouring all that energy in and you know this is going to be for you and you're working on it to make it just how you want it and then someone invariably goes hey i really like that can you give it to me i quite often go oh okay and then i actually have nothing for myself so um i i i'm trying to be like no, this this one's for me, but I could make you one for a fee. Um, <laughs> for a fee. Let me have a look here. Okay, so I'm trying to. We. I'm I'm like I keep thinking I've got to do some trebles because you know on the treble rows I forget and just keep doing all the singles, trebles and singles, singles and doubles is what I'm doing, not singles and trebles. It's doubles and trebles or singles and doubles 
Don't get the two crochet languages mixed up, Chantel. If you're new here and you have no idea what this project is, in the description box down below are some links. Okay, so in the links, we have Crochet with Claire's pattern, which is the blanket that I'm working on here, which is the mosaic, mosaic crochet, mosaic, that's what we're calling it now, the mosaic crochet blanket. Um, so you can either go and check out her YouTube channel and grab it for free, or you can jump on her website and download the PDF. Um, there's a discount code in our chat that she has made just for us. Those of you that have had problems with Claire's website in the past, fixed, okay? Fixed. Um, there, was, there was a problem. It is now remedied. Although there is now a new problem. Well, it's maybe not a new problem, but because of the, the last problem, we could, didn't realize there was another problem. So if you are on an Android device, like an Android phone or something like that, her website menus will not open for you. She's contacted her website people and they're being a little bit buttocksy about the whole thing. Um, she has to put in a new theme, so she's going to work on that. But if you're on a computer or on an iPhone device, it all works just fine. Um, and no crazy pop-ups, no sending you 4,000 places, no scary things. So you can go and grab the pattern and any of her other patterns that are over on her website. Um, the other thing that we are using here is the beautiful um, Maker Dirty DK acrylic. Massive skeins, 200 gram skeins, 333 meters. Gorgeous yarn beautiful to work with. I, it's such a pleasure. Good acrylic I find is hard to come by. It's really easy to find dodgy acrylic. And I think, I can't remember what these bullets were. Look, can anyone remember how much these were off the top of my head? I can't remember how much I paid for them. They were, was it six fifty or eight fifty for the, for the 200 grams? Either way, it's a bargain for 200 grams. Um, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but there is a link in the description for the Maker Yarn. Now, that one is an affiliate link. So any sales that um, are made with that, I will get a little commission at no um, at no additional cost to you. So um, it doesn't hurt you. It just gives gives me a little a little tiny few cents when you um, when you buy, and all the little few cents all add up to make big senses. So thank you. Um, Angela says, thanks for the heads up. I'm an Android user and do most things on my phone. Look, you know what? Me too. Um, I do have an iPhone as well because of uh, my other business. I have Windows computers, Mac computers, iPhones and Android phones because different people need help on different platforms. So I try to help in all the places. Um, and, and that was when we realized that it was not a mobile problem. It was an Android problem because I was like, hang on, I'm just going to check this on my iPhone. And it worked. It was so weird. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Chintami says the eight ply was 450 Australian. Is that right? No, that doesn't seem right. Let me just, really? I, I'm, I'm checking. I'm che I have to check now. I'm like, wait, what now? I've got to go and look. I've got to look. Maker. That that's that doesn't seem what? Maker yarn. Alright, um no no dirty DK is eight fifty for eight ply. So gosh, I nearly had a heart attack there, Chintamini. I was like, goodness me. Um but yeah. And if you go over there and it's your first time over there, you can also grab 10% off for yourself as well, off your first orders. Um, there's a little little heart tab down the bottom that says 10% off. So you can you can totally do that as well. Um, Dolores says, I'm finding it very hard to resist the urge to cast Claire's mosaic crochet blanket on. I must finish a few projects first. I must finish a few projects. I know those feelings, but I needed a project that I could work on during the live streams. I'll just push that keyboard back away. Uh, okay, so for those that are still new here, I just remember we still haven't talked about the dice. Because it's very easy for me to want to make a pattern, okay? I wanted a truly random blanket 
truly random choice of colours on the blanket. And unfortunately, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know, I know myself. And if I, if I was just like, oh, you know, I think I'm going to use, you know, such and such a colour because I haven't used it for a while. I would realise very quickly on that, that I would have created a pattern, a very discernible pattern. And it happened within the test that I was doing. Um, I was trying to just be random and realised I wasn't quite as random as I thought I was. So I decided to go with dice. Now, I found this amazing local dice maker and got these fantastic packs of mixed dice. And I may have bought three packs because they were so inexpensive. And then I could have multiple dice so that I didn't have the issue of the possibility of never rolling a particular number because of a, a fault in the dice. Uh, turns out that the three dice, none of them like eights, okay? None of them like eights. I don't know what's going on there. And so anyway, so I went with natural 20 dice. Um, this is my, these are the rest of the dice. So that it was a totally random mix. So each each pack had one of each type in it. So it had a D20. It had, you know, a D6, a D4, like all the different things. It had them all, but in each pack. So it, even mixed together, there's no double ups. So I'm just like blown away, totally blown away. Um, and then also Gamer Widows, who is in our chat, she makes these amazing um, humbug pouches. Now, you know, I've talked about these heaps, right? So I've got tons of them. I've got six or something. But she was just like, oh, I've got this new fabric. <laughs> and I've got little D D20s for stitch markers. I'm like, please, please, please. So I've, I've grabbed one of Gamer Widows' humbugs in the dice fabric with one of her D20 dice on it. I don't know if Gamer Widows has any of those available. She'll have to let you know in the chat. Um, but I just love it. And for me, it was a no-brainer to put all my dice in. I know not everybody has as many dice as me, but you can totally... I'm not going to put it in this one, but you can totally fit like your crochet hooks, your little pairs of scissors, everything that you need for a project in there. Um, so, yeah. It's definitely, definitely an option. Um, John says, I think I need a dice bag with dice fabric. I have 60 plus green dice though. Let me just count how many dice I've got. I don't, I don't have anywhere near 60. But just as an indication, this is not even, like this is not even half full, okay? But in here I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, I have 18 dice in here. If you contacted Gamer Widows, um, I think you have to check. And she might be grizzling at me in her at home going, Ur! but you may be able to get a custom size. You might be able to go a bigger one in the fabric with a little D20 marker. So you would have to contact her. So, oh, uh oh, Kitty's coming in. Bye bye, skin. Um, you'd have to contact her to ask. But I am sure that some some kind of discussion could be had. Um, but yeah, I really do like a fabric dice bag over a, 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 a over a crochet dice bag personally. Um, Shannon says my daughter is a dice dragon, so she hoards all the dice. It's kind of like me. I'm a bit of a dice dragon. Um, Game Widow's link is there so you can find her Etsy store right there with all of her different project bags and different things um, and go from there um, I may have one or five humbug patches myself I know it's so easy to end up with more right <laughs> um, but yeah so they're, they're the things that I am using I am basically um, going with um, I'm just trying to, I'm like, where, did, remove from broadcast, there it is. Um, I'm using the Make a Yarn Crochet with Claire's Pattern and the Natural 20 Dice Company. And that's how I'm making this yarn, this blanket so 
randomly random to the point where we did have two purples one after another um where we did have a color that wasn't used until here <laughs> so you know it's it's randomly random and i love that that it's randomly random every now and again my brain does a little hiccup like oh i really don't want to use that color there um but it's like the dice said i have to do it so that's what i'm doing um oops i lost a bit of stitch there i've just got to go in there we go try not to split the yarn excuse me excuse me we have a kitten oh just walking around me in circles oh no okay so she's jumped up onto my knitting machines under the table which means she's going to pop out and may unplug things it happens and i can't get her because of where she is i have to wait for her to reappear she's not afraid her name is macy she's about 10 weeks old and she is not afraid of anything She's not afraid of Tibbles, which is our big giant cat. She's not afraid of just jumping from the kitchen bench to the floor, which just seems so far for such a tiny kitty. Uh-oh. At least she's not coming up via my skin, you know? Like, I don't know what's worse. The possible... Oh, hello. I spoke too soon. Hello. Oh, here she is. Hello, Macy. Hello, Macy. Um, hi. Thanks. Thanks. Macy likes yarn. It's great. Macy chewed through my chow goo nylon cables on a sweater that I'm knitting. So, awesome. Um, and I'm sort of sitting there thinking, like, hasn't this happened to me before? And I realized that when Tibbles was her age, um, I was a knit pro user. So 15 years ago. And um, Tibbles chewed through my Knit Pro cables. He got through about six or seven cables. And uh, and then um, Chow Goo came into my life with their lovely red metal cables. He tried chewing them once and gave up. So I instantly dug through my pouch to find some um, cables. I can't move the blanket with you sitting on it right there. She's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. I'm watching the blue yarn move. I'm about to pounce on that. So, Louie. <laughs> you guys can't see it, but he is on his back. Let me see if I can just move this around. Hang on. My tears in the way. His head. Oops, he moved when I moved the thing. <laughs> He's just squished in there. Okay, I'm being hounded by pets. So basically how, how it happens now is out in the lounge room in the sunny chair. No yarn for kitties. Um, let me just, there you go. You could have a bit more kitty. Um, please don't chew on the yarn. So professional. I'm such a professional creator now. I've got the cat harassing me. Um... She's just gonna, she's just like, oh, yarn is awesome. I, I also like yarn. I am a yarning cat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I try very hard to, to not encourage this, but unfortunately, just the nature of working with the yarn means that she wants to work with the yarn also. She's very cute. She's very tiny. I, I prefer tiny cats, although Tibbles was a tiny kitten and now he is a mountain lion. So, who still thinks he's a tiny kitten? No, 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 no biting the yarn. You can tension it with your paw. It's very helpful. You're very helpful. Tension. No, you don't need to tension it with your mouse as well. That's too much tension. Um, I, I, do have, I do have a helper. She's a bit adorable. She'll get bored and she'll just go and just pounce on Louie's head or, or just walk up and, you know, kick something off the table. It's just what she does because cat, you know, she is the epitome of a cat. We, we, we actually uh, have taken to calling her the Velociraptor and she just stalks around the house just attacking things with her face. Um, Tibbles is not immune, giant cat who could just, you know, throw her through a wall. She runs up, latches her little paws around his neck and just tries to eat his face 
and he just meows and pushes her away and walks off. Bianca, oh, I've got the yarn back. Ooh, for now. Um, she's still, she's just out of shot. She's still there staring at the yarn. This, this is possibly not a good thing. Uh, Bianca has just come in from the airport from Vancouver. Nice. What was the weather like over in Vancouver at this time of the year? Probably still quite cold, I would imagine. Yes, what are you doing? We don't need kitty help with dice either. Just saying. Kitties don't need honey water. She's like, I could drink that. No, you can't drink that. Get out. Come on, away from my drink. Like, I'm just going to go behind the monitor and just trash some stuff over here. You don't need anything behind here, do you? No. All right, we made it to the end of the... Oh, she's just popped up around the other side. She's standing on top of a laptop. Great. Um, yeah, that's right. That's why Bianca didn't make it to Caffeinated Crafters last time. Was because Bianca was not in the country. All righty. So let's pop that one back there for safekeeping from Kitty. She's like, wait, I like pink. I'm a ginger kitty. Ginger kitties and pink go together. How do I get to the pink yarn, she says. Please don't kick my mouse. Hi. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sorry, Lou, are you okay? <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry, big boy. It's like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> are you right? Are you right? It's like, I'm out. <laughs> Do you want to go down and hang out with Louie? Here you go. There you go. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how it happened, but all of a sudden, Louie's webcam just slid off the table. Now, I do want to say that Macy was quite close to the webcam. I don't know if she touched it. I don't know. But all of a sudden, it hit the, the webcam. Um hit Louie. I'm sorry, Lou. It's like, I was really comfy. Oh, FYI, Louie is in sheep pajamas today. Um, it is cold and he would like to keep his pajamas on, please. When I tried to take them off him this morning, he was just like, ah, no, and kept like moving away. Um, they were having extreme weather. It was clear blue skies and over 26 degrees, hottest was 32. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, we had packed for 12 degrees, not 32. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that would be a shock. That would be a bit of a shock. I remember one time um, I packed to go to New Zealand and I'd been looking at the weather and the weather said it was going to be all fine. And my husband was like, no, it's not. It's going to be terrible. Pack warm clothes. Pack warm clothes. And because, I, you know, I had limited suitcase space, I couldn't pack both. So I got there and melted for the entire weekend because... A long sleeve t-shirt was the coolest top I had and it was in, it was in 30s the whole weekend. So I I did melt a lot. There was a lot of melting. Um, yeah, he, he definitely got a rude awakening. Um, Francis says, sorry, I'm late. I've started doing a 9 to 10 gym or pool session every day this week and was having so much fun trying all the different machines. I lost track of time. Oh my gosh, that sounds awesome. Um it sounds absolutely awesome. Yeah, given my track record of Melbourne. I can go to Melbourne in the fits of summer at Chris, like a week before Christmas when it's the hottest time of the year and it will rain and drop down to 10 degrees for the whole time I'm there. And then when I come home, the sun comes out to the point now where if they're having unseasonably cold weather, Emma rings me and goes, are you in Melbourne? <laughs> like, no, you can't blame me for all the bad weather, you know. Goodness me. So out of curiosity, those of you that were here and saw, what did you guys think of that Australian wool store wool? Do you think you'll go and check it out? Um, because I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I'm trying to, uh, what I'm actually trying to do right now is work through some of my stash so that I can do some guilt-free shopping and like some guilt-free serious shopping. I want to make a big woolen blanket. I'm thinking the, um, the pure wool 
10 ply or 14 ply, like one of the chunky ones, and make a full size single bed, full size blanket. One of the reasons is we realized we have no spare doonas in this house. And do you know how we realized that? Was last night I went to go to bed and I'm going to assume it was new kitty had peed upon my doona. And so my doona had to go out of the bedroom. It was just a doona that got got, but it had to go into the washing machine. It's out in the line now. Luckily I can, I can machine wash my, my queen size doona. But that meant we had a single bed doona, which Tim used. Um, and I had to jerry rig myself a doona. I mean, I could have grabbed a sleeping bag, but sleeping bags are my favorite because they make rustle, rustle noises. Um, what's a doona? A doona is like, it's the thick puffy blanket that you put inside a cover on your bed. I'm um, just trying to think. It's not a comforter because comforters don't have covers. Comforters, their covers are stitched on. Um, but it's kind of fluffy like a comforter, like thick. Um, but it's like a big bedspread, big blanket. And then you put them inside doona covers, but you know, they've, they've or duvet, duvet might be the other word. Duvet. Thank you guys. Doona equals duvet. Okay. Thank you. That's another Australian thing possibly, but so it had to go into the wash, big queen size one, like our washing machine can take it. Um, so I had to jerry rig myself up sleeping situation. I could have used a sleeping bag and as sleeping bags do zip out, but they also rustle. I don't, I, I'm a light sleeper. And so unless I have to be in a sleeping or have, unless I have to use a sleeping bag, I won't. So I jerry rigged myself a little blanket thing out of a couple of sheets and some of my um, wool blank and, or, and my, um, it's gone. You can't see it because it's been removed, but my, um, what was the one that, that I, that I took to Bendigo that, Oh my gosh, it's a Deidreus blanket pattern with the big squares. Oh, total mind blank. Um, Charlotte's Dream. Charlotte's Dream. Um, I, I did think about the Queen, Lisby, um, but it's very big and it's very heavy and I was going to have to fold it in half. So it was going to be extra heavy. And because of pets, I would have wanted to put a sheet over the top of it because the cats and the dog do jump up on the bed while I'm sleeping. Um, so, yeah, I just thought I was going to overheat in the queen. It's not quite cold enough for the queen yet. But, yeah. So the queen's still here. The queen stayed right there. I looked at it. I looked at it. And I was warm enough. I was warm enough. Um, I'll be very happy to have my doona back, let me tell you that. I much prefer a doona than a blanket for um, sleeping under. But it made me realize how much I, I do want a full size single bed blanket because all my like little lap rugs and blankets are all just that bit short because I also don't like them dragging on the floor when I'm using them on the couch, which is where the majority of them get used. Um, so I think that I would love to make a 10 ply or 14 ply probably 10 ply, honestly, um, blanket. I'm thinking, okay, like you guys are going to freak out. I'm thinking like a giant scale Battenberg, you know, with the, the white squares or cream squares or gray squares, it'll probably end up being gray, gray squares and colored squares of all the different colors and just do a big single bed Battenberg that way, crocheted rather than knitted. I'm in the middle of knitting a a, a cotton blanket at the moment out in the it's called it's the prism blanket from pearl soho and i'm using two strands of bendigo four ply together to get like a, a either like a, a much thicker version than their eight ply let me tell you which i'm much happy about um josephine says it's cold enough for my queen yeah <sighs> okay I will, I will consider the queen next time, but I should have my doona back tonight unless it doesn't dry on the line today because it is too big for the dryer. It can't go in the dryer. Um, my mitered square blanket is on my bed currently supplying additional warmth. Nice. 
Um, uh, so we took on this term in the 1980s, like an Australian slang term for quilts, and it's stuck around ever since. Most Australians now use the term doona, meaning a quilt. There is no difference between a quilt and a doona. See, I look at it as a quilt is gets doesn't get a cover. Same as same as comforters. Comforters and quilts don't get a cover. Um, Dunas and duvets do, but that's just in my brain. That doesn't mean it's that's right. But yeah, because like quilts are beautiful. They usually I I'm thinking of like quilts, like as in something someone's made and done all the precious stitching and the colours, and that's what I think of when I think of a quilt. But they don't get covers. Whereas duvets get a cover. But anyway, I think we all know what we're talking about now. So yeah, anyway, I'm thinking giant sort of Battenberg style using the 10 ply yarn with the four, is it, I think they're four round squares. Let me have a look here. I made a 10 ply square. That's the green. Yeah, like with those, but like similar size, but with the Battenberg style, more closed grannies. And I probably would prefer, oh, I don't know, would I prefer this or would I prefer the, I'd have to sample to work out which one I want to do it in. I think I'd have to wash this. If it softens up even just a little when it's washed, I'd use this. So, yeah, that's where I'm going. Whereas, actually, with the 14, I would definitely... The 14 is definitely soft enough. Anyway, I'll probably go with the 10 ply just because I think the 14 is a bit too chonky. A quilt to me is a hand stitch thing. Yeah, I look, you know, I, and for quilts, I'm like, okay, if they're hand stitched or mas machine stitched. Isn't it interesting how we all have a different thing in mind when we say a different word? I do find that that's very interesting. Oh, Louis, are you back? Are you, do you want help with your blankie? You've got your face under it, but not your body. Okay. Um, and it also said that weighted blankets that went inside a cover. Okay. I don't know if I consider my my doona weighted, but I suppose it is weighty for sure. Hence not fitting in the dryer because it's a queen size doona, duvet, quilt, whatever. Bedspread. Now, bedspreads to me, I always think of like thinner light, like the queen. I consider that to be a bedspread. But that could just be, again, my silly brain putting random words. Yeah, I think that there are definitely factory made quilts too, but I always do think of a, a quilt as a homemade thing. Isn't it bizarre? It's so crazy that we think about these things so differently and you know it's not a regional thing it's just an educational thing like a who taught you how to sew what did they call it who who taught you how to make a bed what did they call it a continental quilt is a duvet and which is a doona yeah continental quilt that's another word for i've heard it called that before it depends on what they're filled with for the weight oh does it okay uh, I believe the one I have right now is a um, some sort of polyester fill as it can go in the washing machine. My feathers have to go to the dry cleaner. So luckily, well, actually the feathers one died. So that's gone, which is why we couldn't even use it as a backup. The queen is weighted with yarn. Yeah, it's got some serious weight to it. For sure. Definitely. 
There's some some freaking kilos in there. There it's got some weight. Did we work out how many kilos of yarn I used? I think I think it was something like three kilos, four kilos of yarn in that blanket. That's a heavy blanket, man. That's a heavy blanket. Um But yeah, it's um I would like to make a giant size squares Battenberg style thing. I am working on a little one, but so far it's about the size of a placemat. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to get, I, I think I'm done. I think I'm done with it. Um, whereas it would be nice to get the larger one with the, the larger yarns. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Oops, I know I'm going to go back and fix that. Um, if I wrap up in it, it's weighted with me. You're right. I become the weight of the queen if I do a, if I go the whole blanket burrito. Blanket burritos. Um, I'm not a blanket burrito person. I'm a rotisserie chicken, but I rotate under the blanket. I don't take it with me. Much. Um, but yes. Now, where are we at for dates? I'm just double checking. I don't think we have caffeinated crafters today. I think the next one's in a couple of weeks. Calendar. That's a calculator. Why do I always do that? Does anybody else have an app that they're like, okay, I'm going to open this app and then always open a different app? Or is it just me? So first. Oh, no, today is Caffeinated Crafters. What am I saying? It is Caffeinated Crafters. It's the, th the third Thursday of the month. Um, so we are going to be at... Um, yeah, it is tonight. You are right. Um, I'm glad I checked because my brain was telling me it was that you guys met last week for some reason. Um, but it was the week before. Anyway, Caffeinated Crafters is tonight. For those that are local, we will be meeting at the coffee club at the Logan Hyperdome at 6 p.m. Now, from what I'm hearing, we need to rug up because it's right near the door and we'll have a discussion about... Um, We'll have a discussion about the possibility of moving back to Ikea for the winter. We'll winter at Ikea and summer at the coffee club because we're too close to the door and anywhere else doesn't have enough light. So I think that might be what we have to do. But we will be there tonight as we have a booking and we'll go from there. For some reason, I thought you went last week. That's the thing. My I've lost entire week, at least from from being sick, silly sick. Oh, John just weighed his twin sized queen five point five kilos. Oh my gosh, John, that like there's no rotisserie chicken chickening under that. That's just like you are weighed down. You are not moving. Enjoy being warm. Good night. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll pop my I'll pop my queen on some scales later on. Bianca says I don't think I make a bit jet lagged. Oh, I totally get that. I totally get it. Okay, is twin our double? Yes, it is. Yeah, nearly. Not quite, but nearly. Australia has quite large bed size compared to other countries, it turns out. I was doing some research. You've got a small person sleeping under it. I bet she feels like she's sleeping in a hug.
Yeah, I think a twin size blanket is probably the closest equivalent to our doubled blankets that you get here in Australia. But then don't be confused if you go to Ikea because their blankets and mattresses and sheets and everything are all, they're named the same way, but they're, the measurements are all different. We are nearly at the end and we were ready for a dice roll. Are you ready for a dice roll? What number do you want to come up? Just double checking I haven't botched anything while I was only half paying attention. Okay, Lisby wants a three. Of course Lisby wants a three because that's purple. All right, we had a two. Shannon wants a five. Freaky wants unrealistic expectations. <laughs> All right, let's go. It's a five. We have a five. Whoops, bring it up. There we go. Five is parrot. Are you parrot? Five. Yes. Okay. Alrighty. I forgot to click the dice roll time thing. That's all right. We knew. Next time. Shannon gets her wish. So the parrot is a lovely red. It's probably a little similar tonally to the pink. So it does blend in a little, but that's okay. Alrighty, we've got it started. So it's just single all the way across. Oh, actually, before I get too hooked into that, ha ha ha, hooked into it. I should write down the number. There we go. Alrighty. Let us. Keep going. I don't know if we're ever going to get an eight. I'm starting to feel despondent about the eights. I made beautiful graphics for it. Um, I've had some fun with it. I've made up a poll with color pictures. So many things that can happen when we get an eight, but the dice just won't play with us. <sighs> sad. Try not to be sad, Chantel. Try not to be sad. There we go. Okay. Just checking the chat. It's pretty quiet in there. Is everyone all, everyone all right? Just working on your projects? What projects are you all working on right now? And those of you that are coming to retreat, what projects are you planning on bringing? It's still a couple of months away. You've got time to plan. But, you know. We have not rolled an eight at all. It has not happened. In all the dice rolls that we have had, we've had no eights. Uh, Game Widows is sewing bags for Bendigo. That's awesome. Chintamani is working at work. Oh, I mean, it's awesome that you have a job, but also I understand. A pair of Dying Dream socks for Brendan. Nice. Nice. The work phone keeps ringing. It's outrageous. How dare it ring, Josephine, during business hours? Gah. Crocheting the millstone stitch blanket. Have I seen a picture of that? For some reason, my brain says yes, but I cannot pull it up. 
I'll have to Google that. I'll have to Google it. But yes, we've got, so those of you that are coming to the retreat, I hope you've checked your emails recently. I sent out an email a couple of days ago. Um, John says, a mosaic crochet blanket with my lady friend sitting next to me playing Animal Crossing. Hello, lady friend. That is awesome. Thank you for letting John still continue to watch his live streams. I appreciate you. Because it could be weird. Like, dude, we don't get to hang out that often. Why are we watching a live stream? Um, but I appreciate that. Uh, Stacey says, stitching on my scarlet letter sampler using beautiful silk threads. That sounds lovely. Um, <laughs> then on to Nisping Girl, who is knitting the world's ugliest ankle socks. Um, everything I was making was turning to crap, so I leaned into it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love that. I love that attitude. It's like, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. Um, okay. Uh, retreat from Josephine. Mm. I think I will start Tina's Azul Blanket or maybe I'll bring my brand new Still in the Box Inkle Loom. Oh, or you could do both. You could do both. Because you've got a car right and you can you can pack both in the car because you've got a whole weekend of just kicking back and working on whatever you want to work on with lots of space and the only judgment coming from leone when we don't leave our craft soon enough to go to the food um kathy says that the blanket is a Potter and Bloom design. I'll thank you, Kathy. I'll check that out. And working on a poncho from Shannon. Leanne's coming to retreat. Yay! I'm excited, and I do hope I to have started the bookshelf blanket by then. Please do bring your inkle loom. I'd love to see it, Josephine. I was actually trying to buy an inkle loom, and my 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 local or my favourite Ashford supplier didn't have any so I should probably contact her again because it's after the time that she said that she'd have them back in um because I too would like an inkle loom because I want to weave straps for bags and the little loom that I'm testing out is on hold um the yarn that Brendan has chosen is very pink forward I like how you worded that that was very diplomatic very diplomatic um very pink forward. Okay. When my dad was here and I gave him, I mean, I think I've told you guys this. Um, or maybe not. My dad came for a visit and he picked up the blanket. Um, and that I made for him. So it was the um, fireside blanket from Attic 24. It was using one of her kits from the wool, wool warehouse. Wool warehouse. I think the kits are back in stock as well for those of you, if you if you care. Um, and um, it was a coolish day when Dad came to visit, and he has literally scooped up the blanket, held it out, said, "I absolutely love it." Folded it in half so it was a triangle, and then proceeded to wear it around the house like a shawl, like a really big down in his back shawl. And he was just like, "Oh my gosh!" He's like, "I've got my beanie, I've got my cow." I've got my blanket. All I need is some socks. <laughs> so he dropped, he's dropping hints. His birthday is very soon. Uh, so maybe I could knock him up some socks. Um, so I'll probably try and do something with a toe so that he can wear his, his thongs because, you know, this is Australia. And it's like, oh, it's cold. You have to just wear socks with your thongs. So... That would be awesome if I could do that for him. Yeah, hint, hint. He's so subtle. He's so subtle. Like a sledgehammer. Um, actually, did he... No, maybe he doesn't have a cow. I thought he's, he's got his beanie. I think I've made him a cow. I think he was, like, surprised that he would like it. And I was just explaining... Because he was like, aren't cows for girls? And I'm like, Dad, cows are for people who want their neck warm but don't want to deal with a freaking scarf. 
And he was just like, well, I don't want to deal with the scarf. And I'm just like, well, then a cow could be for you if we can do it in the colors that you like. And my dad is a creative. He is a painter and a sculptor and he likes all the colors. He doesn't care. Um, flip flops. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Flip flops. Sounds like something your dad would do. Chintamani. Yeah, I think so. I think so. It might be that era of men too. Although in saying that, my husband, when when the, when it is announced that there is a new blanket for the lounge room, he goes in and, and pulls it up to see where it's going to go to when he's on the couch. He get, does give a little test run. It's like, ha, 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 this one shall be mine. It is longer. He does prefer the longer blankets. Which is why this one's going to be a bit longer than our usual couch blankets because most most throws and things like that are normally like a meter or a meter and a half square. Right. Um, and so that's that's an issue when you're sitting on a couch. You need something a bit more rectangular than square. So that's what I'm working on. Something a little more rectangular. I wasn't planning on making this one a full single bed size. Um, I, I can't remember what width we ended up going with and I don't have a tape measure handy. Hang on. So that's one meter. So, uh, well, I've got a 30 centimeter, so it's one meter. One forty-five wide. So, or thereabouts. So maybe one fifty wide. Um, which is about our single bed width. Um, I commented once I was thinking about making some red socks. My brother's head pops up with like, I like red socks. <laughs> yeah. When my brother, Daniel, he loves it when I make something for him he, or when I'm making something and he's like, I like what you're making. <laughs> it's like, it's so subtle. And their faces as well. They're just like, hello. I too could be coerced into having that for me as a gift. Thank you. Um, yeah. Whereas my other brother just doesn't seem to care. He'll just steal my my um, older younger brother. I've got two younger brothers, but he'll just steal the middle brother's beanies. But he won't he won't ask one for himself. And my middle brother's like, "Hey, you could just make him one, and then he'd stop stealing mine." I'm like, "He could ask, and he could choose colors like what you do. You could tell him that." I've told him. He doesn't listen. Go socks. Our local baseball team are the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> don't they lose all the time is it the red Sox that lose all the time i could be wrong i could just be starting a war for no reason i don't know I, do, do they do they lose all the time i don't know uh he's very knitworthy he gave me a handmade leather kidney bag in exchange oh my goodness okay totally knitworthy and totally understands the value of a handcraft um um, Francis says, I just bought some red hand knitted socks at my group's exhibition a couple of weeks ago. Um, they are perfect. <laughs> okay. So I'm hit a nerve with John. Sorry, John. Whoops. So apparently they do lose all the time. <laughs> like in Australia, we know that. Okay. Um, how good is it when your fam love what you make? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, my brother wants me to crochet a wheel cover for his Prado. So, oh, see, look, I understand that request, but that thing's going to get covered in road dust and grossness and get rained on. It's going to look pretty for about 15 seconds. Yeah. Are you going to ask the maker to make for another pet? Oh, awesome, Francis. That's excellent. Um, Shannon says, I guess that means, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it does. Um, oh, and my brother also keeps me well supplied in shell pins. He is a blacksmith. Oh, fantastic. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. 
Oh, he'll probably never even use it. So he's like, just make me this thing because it's the only thing I can think of that I could possibly utilize that's in crochet. But I'm actually never going to use it, even though it's going to take like a hundred bucks worth of cotton and, you know, all that time. Goodness me. All right, guys, we are on for another... Oh, no, we're not. We're not. I'm like, oh, we finished a row. But because the red was so like the pink, I just assumed that we were on for another dice thing. And we're just not. Off to the pink. Hopefully, we'll get another dice roll before the end. If we can crochet quickly. And if we, by we, I mean me. Um, Hence why I didn't make it. Yeah. Nine world championships, I'll have you know. When was the last one? Because like nine world championships in a, in a team that has like an over a hundred year history that, that, um, or near a hundred year history, that's 2018. Oh, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. I was thinking fifties, 1950s. Um, 2018 is not terrible. Like, in all fairness, I actually have no allegiance to any sports teams. So, I'm just poking the bear. I haven't even watched a professional baseball game ever in my life. It's not big here. I've seen, I've seen professional football games and I've seen a professional cricket game. Um, and that's it. Are you having a big stretch, puppy? You made you couldn't hear that, but he made noises as he stretched. It was very cute. And I'm gonna hazard a guess that the Velocity Kitten is out somewhere in the sun because it's quiet out there. So she's not just pushing things off the kitchen bench. She's not harassing Tibbles. John's in here defending the Red Sox like his life depends on it. But as a true Red Sox fan, he has to. He can't not. He has to defend it. So we'll let him. Um, yeah, I definitely poked a bear on that one, didn't I, Leanne? And if you want your own Poke the Bear merch... <laughs> We actually do have some fibrific Poke the Bear merch available over on Redbubble and um, Spreadshop. So you can check those out for yourself. Um, oh, you've watched on telly? I've actually been, like, I went to the Sydney cricket grounds and watched Sydney versus England. and uh, Not Sydney, Australia versus England. And um, I used to watch state level, not state level, but like, you know, local football teams. Like, I used to go down, I was a member at the Warringah Football Club, and so I would watch the Seagulls versus whoever. Who, Seagulls? Warringah? I don't remember. I can't remember the name of the teams. I'm very bad at team names. But I used to eat at the Parramatta Eels Club, watched a couple of their games, you know, stuff like that. Um, on TV, I have partaken of many cricket match watching, um, motorsports, preferably motorbike racing, racing, um, over car racing. Um, but yes, mostly cricket and motorbike racing are the main sports that I watch on television or did. I don't really watch any of them anymore. Um, I've never cared enough about sports to go to the effort of going. Oh, uh, I would go because it's, 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 it's an event. It's fun. And my friends were very excited to go. And after the football matches, we used to go back to the club and it was a lot of fun and the players would be there and just, we'd have dinner and it was just a good time. Uh, I've been to an AFL match as well. I've only been to one, um, but I went to an AFL match too. See, I go, I go, I, I leave the house. Sea eagles, that's it. Sea eagles, not sea eagles. <laughs> I was such a good fan. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hockey is your sport. My little brother plays inline hockey. Um, So that's like 
it's like ice hockey but on rollerblades because this is Queensland and we only have one ice skating rink. So, you know, makes ice hockey harder. Um, baseball is a statistician's favourite sport. I'm not really interested, mostly because I was smacked in the face with a bat as a kid. <laughs> haven't known many AFL players. I mean, that would put you off. That would put you off. I used to play um, T-ball with my brother until um, I was removed from the team. For some reason, my the, whenever I hit the ball, it would always hit him in the head. I don't know what it was. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't really, I don't know. Are you guys into field hockey? Okay. <laughs> John's upset about something. So funny. I really did poke a bit. We um we very rarely talk sport over here, do we? I've realised it's because I'm not a sports ball kind of person, and I just having a bit of a dig at John. <laughs> oh, you yeah. Well, we did a uh, we we had a thing where we would pick the games, and I used to do not terrible at it. I never won, but I did not terrible. Um, knit spin girl doesn't mind watching the cycling. Oh, look, do you know what? I will watch. The Tour de France as for cycling. Now, that's partly because sometimes I get involved in the Tour de Fleece. Um, but also because I love, like with the Tour de France, yes, there's cycling. But it's also beautiful, like the camera work around the fields of France. And it's just beautiful to watch. It's just beautiful. Um, and so that's part of the reason why I like watching the Tour de France is just because, not so much just the cycling, but, I mean, it's partly the cycling, but also just the location. And I'll be honest, that's why I watch a lot of shows that I watch. I love looking at the scenery. Um, you know, like like those dumb Christmas movies. I love them, but part of it is because of the overhead shots of the, of the towns and the... And the the snow fields and you know just all the scenery the scenery is part of the reason um and things like you know csi new york was something i loved not so much i mean i i love it because it's a csi show and i love csi but i also really loved how it showed new york um in saying that i actually prefer watching casey neistat's vlogs you get a more real new yorker's view of new york and I enjoyed those too. One, two, three, four. Is that sitting right? Yeah, that's right enough. So yeah, there's things I'll watch just just to see the surrounds. Not so much care about what the content is, but just enjoy the beauty of the place that they've made it in. I'm always gobsmacked by the different shots and stuff that they can combine to make these fairy tale non-existent towns look real. I've been this week I've been watching some CSI Miami. Um, it's not my favorite of the CSIs, but I'm enjoying it. The gyro is on at the moment. The aerial shots of the Amalfi Coast were spectacular. Most of CSI New York was shot in LA. Most of the inside shots were shot in LA. Most of the externals were shot in New York. Or a lot of the externals. But just about all of the inside, like inside their offices and stuff like that, that's all LA. That's kind of like supernatural, right? Like it's kind of funny about how like they travel all around America to, you know, solve all these crimes and everything. And it's shot in Canada. Or it was shot in Canada. Um, there was this one episode that I saw and it was in uh, Missoula, Montana. That name of the town is correct. But I know someone who lives in Missoula. And they're like, I've been all over. <laughs> that shot doesn't exist here. There's no way they could have gotten that shot with that sign, with that background. 
It just is not possible. So I was just like, that's kind of funny. And it was like a really blatantly obvious thing that made it really hard for it to exist. But yeah, I, you know, we have to suspend reality sometimes, people. These shows, we've got to suspend reality. Uh, in saying that, not much of anything's being done right now. So, you know, make sure you've you've got all your favourites backups ready to go with the Writers Guild strike that's happening in the US at the moment and other countries are uh, sort of striking in solidarity. So um, like c companies like Netflix and things like that aren't, are not just able to get their writers from other countries just to t pick up the slack. Um, because of the demands of the Writers Guild actually will affect everybody. So, yes, it's very interesting what's happening. And you know what's really weird? Like, I know you guys don't care because I've tried talking about to my husband and to my mum. Nobody else cares, right? What's really interesting is they're actually not asking for that much. <laughs> like, they're really just not asking for that much. So... Yeah. I'm just having a look. There's stuff coming in the chat that hasn't come across yet. So I can't read it. It's too small over on the other screen. I have to wait. Um, but yeah, I can't wait until the writers, get, the writers come back. And, and I was very sad to see that the Winchesters got cancelled. Kung Fu has been cancelled. Uh, Walker Independence has been cancelled. And Gotham Knights is still on the chopping block. So um, there's lots of social media um, campaigns. I want to use the word campaigns. Um, where it's like to try and save some of these shows and get them picked up by other other services like Amazon or, or Netflix or, you know, because Nexstar has got no idea what they've just thrown away. Just put that out there. There's a bit of a knot there. What are you? Can you? Yeah, you can. You can totally survive a crochet stitch. Um, it's just a knot on part. It's just a knot on one of the plies, not on all the plies. Oops, I think I've just pulled. It. Made it worse. Made it worse. Go me. Um, Fringe has an episode that was supposed to be in Stoughton, Massachusetts, uh, and there was a shot of a large bridge over water. Stoughton is landlocked. There is no bridge. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it was something along those lines. I can't remember exactly what it was. It was something like, you know, and, and one of the entries into town with the sign of welcome to Missoula um, with a mountain range or something behind it. And it's just like, that's not how it works. Um, one of the Matrix movies was shot around Parramatta near where I worked. Yeah. Oh, I saw that um, filming for NCIS Sydney has started. So the first NCIS to be shot outside of the U.S., because Hawaii is technically USA. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. I'd be very curious to see how that goes and how it ranks amongst the other NCISs out there. Now that NCIS LA has finished its run, it had a very long run as well, which I thought was awesome. One, two, three, four. I'm going to sneeze. The only things that get shot around here is, is an, I think it's a Netflix series <laughs> about Bogans. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but there's a lot of people around here who really hate it because they're like, they don't like that our town is being um, like shown in that light, except I'm really sorry, but that's our town. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, what light do you want to show? <laughs> like, we can only suspend reality so much. Um... Jackie Chan movies always amuse me mostly because they were filmed in Melbourne in this crowd for one of them, which, oh, I wonder which Jackie Chan movie. Um, wonder if any of the stories will be based on true crime. I mean, I mean, they probably get ideas from reality, but they have to be very careful. So about how close to reality they go when they're portraying it as fiction. 
there's some shows that I really hope it's all fiction because I'm like, if that happens in real life, I'm just going to cry and never leave my house. Actually, I just about never leave my house anyway. What, what, what'll be different? What'll be different? Uh, there are a couple of Jackie Chan movies that were partially set in Australia. Okay, I didn't know that. I'll have to check. I don't know which ones. Makes sense, though. Australia's a really popular place for filming. Um, apparently, our governments give very good tax incentives. And um, and the US dollar is very strong against the Australian dollar right now. So, yeah. And lots of actors are willing to come out and stay in Australia for a long time, like for months to film out here. Oh, I've got the runny nose thing happening and I don't know if I have a tissue. I'm going to have to run off and grab a tissue, you guys. I'm sorry. But when I come back, it's dice roll time. So I would like to see in the chat what number you would like to see for the dice roll. Okay. I'll grab a tissue and I shall return. It's dice roll. dice roll time. Roll the dice to choose the next colour. I'm back. All right, um, fours, eight, green. Do we have, oh yeah, we have amphibian. I was like, do we have green? Um, eights. An eight, lots of eights. All right, let's see what we get here. So we've used that one, we've used this one. Let's see what we can do. Can we get an eight? Oh, it freezes at the end. I've I I have to press a button every time to make it go away. Three. Poo. <laughs> I mean, fine. I like I like the purple. I just really wanted an eight. <laughs> it's like ugh. fine. I mean, it's still got yarn buff, so. It does need to be used to try and deal with that. <sighs> Knit Spin Girls is happy. Um, number three, Anemone. All right, singles all the way across. We've got this. So we've had a very, very interesting broad range of topics again. I love this. This is one of the things I love about this group is that you guys always have interesting things to talk about. Just so bizarre. Are we sure these dice aren't actually badly weighted? Okay, so this one is a commercial dice that I bought from, like it's it's in a set that I bought from a dice store. It's a commercial grade dice. These two are custom handmaids. And I have, I did some test rolls before we started using them and I got eights. The eights will land. Just apparently not during live stream. So, and this is one of the reasons why we're using three dice as well, Francis, is so that if one of the dice is badly weighted in one way, the other dice pick, pick it up. I feel that they're biased against eight. I know. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have made so much fun stuff and awesome stuff for eights. Now it just is afraid. Like it may not meet the expectation. I don't know. I don't know. So, Yeah. Drinking time. The eights are shy. They are shy, Angela.
Now I'm like, oh, what am I going to have at, at coffee club for dinner? Thank you, Chintamani, for the for the heads up. I appreciate that. Um, buy a tie with nothing but eights on it. That's a, I mean, I'm sure we could possibly do that. We could just scribble eights all over everything. Or we could just go st stink it. Let's just do a, re a wild draw. Do you know what would happen? You know what? If I decided to break the, do what the dice save rule, right? And just do a, an eight and, and go through like the, the polling process and, and, you know, use all the fun stuff that I've made. The next roll would be an eight. <laughs> like that's what I can see it happening. The next roll would just be an eight. Hey, Russell, good to see you in the chat. Um, it is. This blanket's coming up so nicely. Um, I'm very, very happy with it. Very happy. Except for the whole no eights yet. We haven't had an eight, which is what we're complaining about. We, me, me. I'm the one complaining. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be what would happen, right? Like, is that what would happen to everybody else if you decided to just, you know, do what you want to do? Then the next thing would be that anyway. I suppose then we would get more fun happening. Yeah. Eight's going to be the border. Um, the border's going to be pink. It's like we're not choosing colours for the border. Like at least, at least this stage, if if I get to if we don't run out of pink, then the border's going to be pink. Um, Francis says it's lunchtime. Some cabanossi and cheese toasties for lunch. That sounds amazing. Um, what am I going to have for lunch? Oh, I've got leftovers of honey soy chicken stir fry for dinner that we had for dinner last night. So I'm going to have that for lunch today. Um, if you get to the end and still don't have an eight, a, a, an eight rolled legit, you have to give us it then. Do we have to wait till the end? I mean, seriously, we're not even like, we're, we're, we're like a quarter of the way through. Like, gosh. Yeah, I was like going to just make like a, a lame dinner last night, right? Just a, you know, jar sauce, chicken, rice kind of job. And I said to Abby, because she was off to work yesterday, I'm like, can you just choose a jar of whatever and bring it home? Um, I'll be tired because I had an exercise physiology appointment yesterday. Um, and she was like, what, can't we just have honey soy? And I've looked around, I'm like, yes, we've got all the ingredients. Fine, I'll make a proper meal with like vegetables and stuff. I'm glad I did, but gosh, I was a bit sore. My, it was a big arm workout yesterday. Arms and legs, lots of squatting things. And we did deadlifts. I had, I, I, I'm up to a new personal best with my deadlifts now. They're 50 kilo deadlifts, which doesn't sound a lot. But then we do three, uh, we did four reps of 12 of the 50 kilo deadlifts. Um, and then we did, um, what was, I don't know what everything's called. That's the problem. Um, I had to do the thing where you sit on the chair and have to, push up from the back of the chair we oh gee, my arms are just like yeah let's not even show how we did that um but that's really awkward for me because I have short arms and I have to, have to actually scooch off the chair before my hands actually reach the sides which my exercise physiologist thinks is just insanely hilarious was, and I swear that's why they're added into the routine more now it's got nothing to do with the fact that I'm getting fitter and stronger and everything to do with the fact that he just finds it's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, you can't break the dice roll. Yeah, I agree. Um, Emma's off. Bye, Emma. Have an awesome day. So, yeah. Um, so we did those, those things. Dips. I think they're called dips. Oh, yuck. What's going on there with it? Yarn. Icky bits. Is this 
try to balance did I maybe I I don't think I did anything for that I think that's just the yarn that happens sometimes let's just try and make it less ugly and crochet it in ha 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 hide the ugly or like Tamantha did embrace the ugly Yep, that all stitched in. Good. It's a little chunky, but it's fine. It's fine. Bye, Freaky Geek. Have an awesome night. I've split the stitch. Uh, I worked with Physio towards transferring into my driver's seat to drive myself to the waterfront. Oh, nice. Not far from being able to drive myself to Cabernet de Grappers. Yay. That's exciting. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Not that I'm not happy that Brendan brings you. I am. I'm very, very happy that he does that. But I think it would be awesome. Because then you wouldn't be restricted to when Brendan, you know, works, allows it. Okay. Look, you know what? Considering we had a big chat about the other yarn at the start, I think getting three colours in was pretty good. I was hopeful. But I wasn't, you know, I wasn't expecting to make it. But we got three new colours in, which I think is pretty dang cool. And this row will get completely done and we'll get the pink started. So we will make sure that the pink is done for next time so that we're ready to rock and roll straight away with the dice roll for next Thursday. And we will go from there. So, how's everybody else's projects going? Are you happy with the progress that you made during today's live stream? So, let me know in the chat. Did I cause snafus or are you all good? Because I know that sometimes me talking sometimes distracts you from your work and you have to choose simpler projects. I've got a project because knitting sweaters is not my natural ballpark. Um, do you guys remember like ages ago when I had that Hobie wool cotton in that beautiful midnight blue um, arrive? Well, I'm trying to empty out some crates and it's this bag of wool cotton takes up the, a large portion of a crate. So I'm like, if I just make a sweater with that, then that will empty like over halfway empty a crate. So that's what I'm doing. Because I need to make, I need to clear out space for six crates. So that we can move our Christmas stuff that we had to pull out of storage. Because it's currently in our entry area. And I don't like it sitting there. So I've got to use up six crates worth of stuff. Quickly. I mean, there's a couple of half empty crates I'm just going to combine. Um, so, yeah. The... It'll be, it won't be, you know, let's work six projects. And the blanket, the fusion blanket's nearly done. Oh, I wanted to say, Kelly, the three-in-one needle puller thing is working a treat. Um, so, <laughs> John's like, I wear a 2X in sweaters. Um, I don't know if this one would be your jam, John. It's definitely a bit of a feminine, snug cut, v-neck, jobby. It's a, a hohi Locatelli um sweater uh, at this stage I have not frogged it yet who knows I may frog it um I, I did start another one first and which was a crochet one which I've actually put in my Ravelry queue but the yarn was just a bit too thick for it so I'm going to try something else for that um I actually think the eight ply super fine merino from Australian wool store would look amazing in that one so I'm tempted to order more yarn, which I'm not going to do right now. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm being so good. I'm trying to be so good. But like, what can you do when people just send you yarn? Like, here's some yarn. You've got to make something with it. It's like, oh, no, that's horrible. Now I'm going to have to work with this gorgeous yarn and make something for myself. Oh, worst. It's totally the worst. Um, there we go. We got to the end of the beautiful anemone. Now we are back. There's still yarn buff on the anemone that we've got to deal with. Like you can't, like, there we go. It's not as bad, but it's still there. 
Okay, back to the remove an enemy, add that one. Back to the main flamingo, flamingo hot pinkness. Now let me have a look, managed to, to frog the first hundred gram ball from my dressing gown today, so much to go. Oh my gosh, that sounds like such the hugest dressing gown and I'm glad you're frogging it. Are you going to reuse the yarn for something else? Um, Francis says, I'm planning, uh, I, I'm, I'm just sort of double checking that I wasn't doing the wrong thing here. Um, I'm planning a one kilo spin for a jumble, for a jumble? I don't know what a jumble is. Um, have I tried the Tina Humpa? I've seen it. I haven't tried it. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't really jump in, so I like the look of it. It looks like I really, like, I can imagine it would be a really super awesome, like how I think of a grandpa blanket, a grandpa sweater, right? But the constructions of the arms concerns me because of, because of my arms. Um, I need to allow a lot of space and some constructions make that harder than others. And that looks like, which I haven't done a huge amount of research, but it does look like the construction of the arms might, might be tricky for me. Sue Singleton in the house. Hello, Sue. Um, oh, it's a jumper. Sorry, Francis. <laughs> it didn't even click that it could possibly be a jumper. There's so many words I don't know. Um, Florida says, funny how the colors of the yarn are different in the pictures. Uh, look, absolutely. And this particular pink, um, I've tried using six different webcam slash cameras to try and get it to work, but it's just so vibrant and bright that it just totally destructos on the cameras, even changing the settings. Like I've had to bring the brightness down and the contrast down just so we could get some stitch definition. The pink is a hot pink. And so therefore the cameras just do not like it. Like this is the Sony A6400. It still doesn't like how hot pink this is. And it is amazing with color. It just does not cope. It's just so saturated. Um, Sue says, catch me up. Have we spun an eight? No. No, we haven't. There's much sadness, but there is no eights have been spun. Our vampy is planning on making a blanket with that yarn. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That'll make a big blanket too. Because what did you say it was? Like three kilos or five kilos dry and 10 kilos wet? Like, yeah, definitely blanket quantity um but yeah no I really struggle I'm sure better videographers could make it work um I have not been able to make it work so that's why I recommend if you want to check out what the colors look like more true to life go and hit up my Instagram feed I'm able to take better photos than I am um video of this particular color so yeah it's just so vibrant. And I mean, I love it. It's going to look amazing in my living room, right? It's just going to be like glowing pink on my cream sofa. Um, it's it's going to be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to using it. However, the camera does not much like it. And next time I choose a project for on camera, I will be more mindful of the colors. Because I was just like, I don't want white. Why is boring? Because I was going to use white instead of pink for all the in-betweenies. And I was like, oh, I don't want white. White in my house just doesn't last. If I could have gotten a cream or a soft gray, I would have gone that way for sure. Um, but at that stage, there were no other options. So it was white or vibrant. So I went vibrant. Um, yeah, sorry. So we are just working along here and I will, you know what? We're so close to the end. If you guys are happy to hang out, I'm going to stay on until I finish the end of this row. I know it's midday now. My tummy is reminding me that it's lunchtime, that I had a lame breakfast and that we won't be telling the dietitian about how bad my breakfast was today. 
but it had did not have enough of anything in it. It was better than a cup of coffee. It was more than a, it was two cups of coffee, plus a high protein yogurt. Okay, which is not actually considered a meal. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> um, it's three kilo dry because it's all single crochet, and I'm, I'm not a petite individual. Look, and you want your dressing gowns big, and you know, like they're supposed to wrap around you, like they're just a big garment. Like no matter like you know no matter the size of you it the the actual dressing gown itself is just a large garment. Francis is happy to hang out longer. Awesome, Francis. Thank you for keeping me company while I finish this off. Um, no, we're not going to do another roll. We're not going to do another roll. We're just going to finish this one this row off so that we're ready for our first roll for next week. Um, Shannon is off. Good night, Shannon. Have an amazing night. I hope you sleep well. Um. Florida, uh, Florida manufactured Russell is bedtime for him as well. Good night, Russell. And I see that Leanne did pop it in my IG. Thank you, Leanne, for throwing that up for me. Appreciate it. Um, sorry, I moved my hands a bit so that it's a bit more visible. Um. It is 12. Thank you, Chintamani. We're just going to finish off this row and then we'll bounce. It was good having Shannon here. Uh, Shannon, have you been in for a live stream before? I just don't know if I recognized your name. Although, you know, I'm not 100% and I could be just offending you that I, I don't recall the name in the live streams. Oh, yesterday in Claire's live, we were talking about the different ways to hold our hooks. And I was trying to describe how I hold mine. It's sort of like a pen, but sort of not. And I've just realized, like, and so I hold it like this. Like, I don't hold a pen like that. I hold my chopsticks like this, but not a pen. Because I hold pens more like that. Whereas I hold my crochet hook like this. And I do move my fingers around a lot. Um, oh, you have. Sorry, Shannon. You've been in a few times. I'm sorry if I've missed your name. Um, Bianca, see you next week. I hope you rest well and get over your jet lag as fast as possible. I've been reading up on different ways to control or minimize jet lag because I really, really do want to go to Dallas for this YouTube event I don't I don't, honestly don't think I'm going to get to go but I'm still you know hopeful um and if I go it's an 18 hour flight and I'm just like okay the longest flight I've been on is three or four hours which was from Brisbane to Auckland that's it I think so I think it's like three and a half hours so I was thinking about visiting another friend of mine and where they are. I was thinking their flight was like a five or six hour flight. Turns out it's 11. I'm like, nope, not doing that as the trial run. It's too far and too costly for a test run. Um, and now I'm like, okay, right. Let's just prepare to learn how to deal with an 18 hour flight. Vancouver was 14 hours. Oh my gosh. See, one of the things that I've seen that they recommend is that you actually start flipping your days to your destination time zone early. And I can, I actually do flip days every week. I flip my Saturdays. Um, so I probably live in this perpetual state of, it would actually explain a lot, live in this perpetual state of jet lag. Um, but yeah, because I, I, I try to flip my Saturdays because I need to work um, from like 10 till 4 like PM to AM. Uh, Bianca says, I'm used to flying to Europe and that flight's over 24 hours. Okay, so 14 hours is a little hop and skip for you. Could you break the flight into smaller legs? Look, I could, but I ha have a greater fear. So I am not afraid of flying. I'm afraid of, of missing my flight. And if I break it into smaller legs... Um, then I have this possibility 
of having a total panic attack in some random country airport because um, I'm afraid I'll miss my flight. Um, so, and because I'm not super mobile, um, I, the, the thought of, of the connecting flight coming in late, meaning I have to really dash for, um, for another boarding gate that's like a really far away, um, stresses me out as well because I can't dash, like I physically can't. And so, um, for me, I think at least for this first one, it might be better off just to deal with being on the plane for so long. Um, even though that's got its own issues. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what's the best way to go. Like deal with being on a plane for 18 hours or the possibility of missing into changing flights. And uh, um, John says, I'm not afraid of flying. I just don't want to be stuck in a metal tube for 24 hours. See, and that's the thing. Like I, I'm not, that's, that's another thing. The idea of like that is also like, uh, but in saying that, I can keep myself quite occupied sitting for long periods of time. Um, even if I can't have craft, which sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Um, but yeah, so even without craft, I can still keep myself occupied as long as I've got like a laptop or, or a, a tablet or something. So um, I'm, I've got no qualms for that. It's more just like when I get to the other end I don't want to be a zombie for three days where I've got to book in extra, extra early to try and be ready for the event. Um, I don't cope well if they take my emotional support needing away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, multi-stop can, yeah, yeah. Multi-stop can be super expensive as well, um, depending on where you want to stop and things like that. Other times it can actually reduce the cost. It just depends on times and flights and all that sort of stuff. Um, the other thing I like about the non-stop flights is that once you're in, once you're going, you're going like it's, there's no, you know, I mean, when I drive to Bendigo, I'm driving for 12 hours straight each day. So, you know, I'm used to, I mean, I'm occupied in the action of driving. Um, Sue says, I've done some fly-in, fly-out work from the east coast to the west coast of Australia. There was only one time when I wanted to get out and had to talk myself down. Yeah, see, for me, my fear is not flying. I've got no problems. Once I'm in my seat, I'm like, oh, I totally relax. I totally relax. It's the waiting at the airport and getting to the airport and everything. I'm that person that will get to the airport five hours early, just in case there's some sort of, you know, airport drama and it takes three hours to get through, um, you know, security or something. It just, it just makes me feel better once I'm in my seat. I'm like, Phew. um, also more stressful if there's a delay, for example, my flight this morning was two hours, 10 minutes late. You could easily miss your connecting flight. Yeah. That's the other thing. I, that, that stresses me out adding that, le that level of stress, like especially if a flight's delayed and quite often they're delayed and like there's nothing, nothing you can do. John wants to exit rows. He likes space. Look, I like space. I don't like to touch strangers. And unfortunately, because of my size and the size of airline seats, at least in Australia, um, I either need an aisle or a window so I can lean into the other space. Um, at least for most of the time, so that I'm not touching somebody else's arms with my big giant arms. Um, Brisbane International was a breeze. Yeah, I've heard that, that Brisbane International is actually not bad. Um, I, I flew to New Zealand out of Brisbane International a couple of times, but I haven't tried it for any, anywhere else. We have made it to the end. Um uh, an 18 hour flight versus a multiple hour flights and the time between the flights, I'd rather just put up the 18 hours. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. And there are direct flights from, well, from Sydney to where I want to go. I don't think there's any from Brisbane, but I'd be happy enough to go to Sydney the night before, stay in one of those little airport hotels and then sit at the Sydney airport for five hours before the appointment. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, 
you probably don't know what I mean. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm weird. I get it. I do understand. I get it. I, yeah, I definitely don't like to be near the toilets. The smell. The smell. Mm -mm. Um, there we go. Uh, I like the back, the aisle girl. Plain toilets are far scarier than the actual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's, that's, if, I, if I get to choose, that's not on the cards. So it's like, where are the toilets on the plane? And where, what is, you know, as far away before I start getting too close to the next set. Um, guys, thank you so much for helping keep me occupied and, you know, entertained while I finished off that last row. We have done six rows today. So that's cool. Three new colors, six rows in total. Um, so... We, we, we're powering along like I'm just I'm just measuring it we're over 30 centimeters now we are 30 35 centimeters 35 centimeters long for those of you that want to know where we're up to 35 centimeters long um, we'll get some photos for the IG so you guys can check out the colors and and I will catch you all um, I'll catch you all next time so be good I'll see those of you that I'll see at caffeinated crafters tonight um, at the coffee club at the Hyperdome. Otherwise, I'll see the rest of you next week. Bye now.